Thanks everyone for your patience in getting us set up today. As she mentioned, I'm gonna talk about powering up your customer experience with conversational AI. And to get started, I first wanna see a show of hands as to who has some area of responsibility in the contact center, whether that's operations or IT, finance. We have one person here. What, what bucket, a couple of people, what bucket would you put yourself into? Product development, great. And then back there? Finance? All right, great, great. So, say it again? Machine learning, okay. So the presentation here is gonna be for those who have a passion about optimizing the contact center and customer experience. But for those of you who aren't in that domain, hopefully I will both entertain and educate you is my ambition. So to get things started, I wanna find out anyone by any chance from my home state of Texas. No Texans in here. Well, Texas has had an interesting problem recently last week or maybe two weeks ago. They had an issue with their water treatment plant where for a day or two their water treatment plant was offline so they had a boil water notice throughout the city. So it was a bit of a challenge for them. And one of the local news stations sought out the water department and found the head of the water department to ask what's going on with uh, water in Houston. And I want to play for you what she said. of Public Works, Carol Haddock. She is the boss of the water department, and it was only then that we were able to get some answers. What's going on? There's a number of things going on. This interview was back on November 8th, but it was the first time the city acknowledged issues impacting customers and the water department. Like every company in the city of Houston and nationwide, we struggle to find enough good employees to fill our positions. Our vacancies in our call center uh, we've been as high as 50% vacancies over the last year and a half. We have infrastructure that's, that's at the end of its life, and we're seeing that we're not getting... So Carol's problem, and I'm not trying to pick on Carol because she's a good person trying to do the right thing, but it's that they have had times where they have a 50% vacancy rate in their contact center. Think about that. Every day when Carol wakes up and goes to work, she's figuring out, how many people do we have to handle the inbound calls that we have to deal with? And there's real life stuff there of people getting water bills for $7,500 and trying to figure out what went wrong. And the city just can't serve them. Another interesting example of dealing with this shortage in the labor market is Frontier Airlines. They, just before Thanksgiving, I think, announced that they're no longer providing telephone support so if you call in to the Frontier Airlines customer support number, if you can find it, and you can actually Google it if you're curious, you have something actually pretty interesting happen. They offer to send you a text message, and the text message is going to have a link to a chat bot that you can access through your mobile device or on the website where you can get either automated or live interactions. And the advantage of that from the contact center perspective is you can have one agent handling multiple interactions at the same time. So they get an efficiency there. Interestingly, the news has kind of um, come down on Frontier, I would say a little bit, and pointed to this as a way of them retreating from having good customer service. But if you think about the value of what's happening is A, people aren't waiting on hold anymore, and B, they're being pushed to better self-service experiences, either through chat like they have here, or if you look at the top of the chat screen, it's through downloading the Frontier app, which has 100% of the capabilities that a live agent could provide. So it's a better customer experience, even though it kind of is done in the spirit of efficiency and optimization. Well, today I wanna to talk to you about this, which is two big challenges that contact centers are facing. One we've talked about, which is challenging labor market, which is higher salary demands and great, uh, great resignation. The other thing is kind of in tandem with that is that how are agents spending their time? Well, agents spend their time doing a lot of repetitive, non-value adding work. And if you think about that frontier example, if I'm calling in because I want to add a bag, I've decided at the last minute I want to bring a bag on a plane, or if I'm calling because I need to change my flight, or I'm just having to identify who I am at the beginning of a call, why should agents be spending time doing this work 
that customers can actually do through self-service. They're not using their brains. They're just repetitively doing the work that a machine could do better. So as inspiration today, I want to talk about three Cognigy customers, Lufthansa, which probably most people have heard of, one of the larger airlines in the world, Eon, which is the largest energy provider in Europe. So if you can turn your light switch on in your home in Europe, it's likely that you're doing business with Eon. And finally, one of the largest insurance companies in the world, whose name we can't mention, but cumulatively, these folks with Cognigy, I don't want to over push our platform here, but just as a FYR, handling 16.2 million conversations currently a year, and this is just growing. They support nine different languages with more than 50 bots in operation on both voice and text channels. I'm not gonna call out one in particular, but I want to say in sum, what is the process, what is the thought process that they've gone through to figure out how they can optimize the customer experience and the agent experience. So the first place they looked at is how are our agents spending their time? If you look at how to optimize your use of the human resource of an agent, think about a few things. One is you hire people and then you need to train them. And that training time is the time where you're paying for them to work in your company and they're not being able to deliver value. So, so what you want to do is you want to be able to say, how can we get these agents in front of customers as quickly as possible? Or when we introduce new business processes, how can we get people up to speed on these new business processes so they can help customers directly and be seen as a meaningful contributor to customers? If you have not worked in a contact center, the normal course of action when someone puts you on hold and says, hey, wait a minute, they might be tinkering with their computer and looking up their customer records, but more likely than not, they're raising their hand. Or they did in the old days, so a manager would come over and explain to them how to handle a call. Well, in the work from home environment, this has gotten harder than ever. So we need to think creatively of how can we support agents. And the way we can do this is through what we call agent assist. So this is being able to sit side by side virtually with an agent, monitor what's going on in a call, and proactively provide information that's going to help agents do their job. So when a customer asks a question, the agent's going to receive a prompt that's going to be the best possible response. Or another way that agents spend and waste their time is imagine that we have three different systems. One is the core CRM system we use. Another one is for order management. Another one might be for, for fulfillment. And maybe you have to look in all three of these systems to be able to answer your question. Or, also very common, imagine we just acquired a new company. And they have three systems all their own. So maybe I'm having to look up a customer record in three different systems or six different systems at once and having to do this all in real time. It wastes agents' time and doesn't create a great customer experience. So what Agent Assist can also do is it can pull in information from the relevant systems and bring this front and center for the agent so they're able to provide customer service quickly without having to say, hey, let me put you on hold while I look this record up for you. So Agent Assist was the obvious first place for people to start. Let's make our agents more productive faster. But then how else could we help agents? Well, conversational IVR is a way to do it too. So one thing is we can say when someone calls in, the first thing they hear should be the ability to express what they're trying to do in their own words to be able to get to the right agent on the first try. So if I'm calling in and I have a question related to my bill, I should be able to say, hey, I'm calling because my bill was higher than usual. The job of conversational IVR is to recognize what the user is trying to do and get them to an agent with the right skills who can help solve their problem. So this optimizes the experience for the user and prevents them from doing the number one thing that people do when they call into a contact center. Does anyone know what that is? Boom. They press zero. They just want to go straight to an operator. And what that ends up doing for the caller is it wastes their time because they're going to be on hold to get to an operator. And when they do get to an operator, the operator is going to say, how can I help you? And then they're going to be on hold again to be routed to the right agent with the right skill set. What we can do through NLU is to be able to say, tell us what you want, and in an automated fashion, we're going to get you to the right agent. The other thing that we can do to help save agents time is we can go through the identification and verification process. 
So we can ask people how to verify themselves, for example, through the phone number, which we're gonna know because they're calling in, and some other piece of information, which is often last four digits of social, date of birth, whatever that second verifying piece of information needs to be. We can verify their identity. And if you fast forward to the time when they are talking to an agent, it means that a well-trained agent knows that this is a verified customer and I can skip those steps and start providing value to the customer as soon as they're talking to a human. And the final way that we can save agents time is through smart self-service. And the idea here is we wanna be able to provide end-to-end -end service experiences so that someone calling in can solve their entire problem without having to wait on hold for a person. So I'll give you an example of this in a little bit, but we really want to say, look at what is an agent doing that is not requiring human judgment, human empathy, or human decision making. Take those and automate them. This solves two problems. Customers get helped faster, and two, it helps you scale your contact center um, quickly, especially in this environment where hiring and salaries are a huge issue. Last thing I'll mention about smart self-service is we talk to customers all the time, contact center managers, and if you don't call into contact centers every day, you might not know this, but it's very common today to have 20 minute hold times, 30 minute hold times. We even had a customer who was having 45 minute hold times for certain kinds of cases. This is a terrible customer experience, and smart self-service is a great way to solve it for a majority of people who are calling in. And what that means is for the 20 or 30% that you can't solve through self-service, there's more agents available to help them faster. So I wanna give um, some example metrics here. In the contact center world, there's standard measures, average handle time, deflection, CSAT. And what those are all pointing to is how can we reduce the handle time of a call for an agent? How can we keep calls from getting to an agent in the first place? And finally, how can we leave customers feeling better about the interaction that they've had with our business? This is powerful stuff that is realizable today through conversational AI. So when people are wrapping their heads around what all of this means, I think people have a concept and have had experience with natural language understanding or conversational IVR. So you know what it means to kind of call in or start a chat and start in your own words. So that's kind of intuitive. And smart self-service, you may not have had a great experiences or many experiences, but you probably had the experience of calling in and solving a problem on your own. But if you're not working in a contact center and you're not an agent in front of your computer every day answering calls, the agent assist concept might be still a little bit abstract for you. So what I wanna show here is an example of how we've integrated with Genesis, integrated into their agent workspace, and we're able to help a caller in real time. So what you're gonna see is someone calling in to their wireless provider. So imagine they're calling in to an AT&T or Verizon or something like that. And what we're doing is we're pushing suggestions in front of the agent so they can help the call caller without having to wait on hold. So let's check this out. Hey, welcome to the customer service. This is John. How may I help you today? Hey, uh, James Wilson here. I have a quick question. Um, do I have any open invoices? Sure, let me have a look. Um, yeah, it looks like you do have an open invoice. Uh, your invoice from March 2022 is still open and it's an amount of 170.44. Would you like me to send that to you via email? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, consider it done. Anything else I can help you with? Yeah, I just received a fiber optic modem. Why do I need this? A fiber optic modem is there because it's it's required for high speed internet nowadays. That's really the only reason. So we decided to send them out uh, to all customers so that they're prepared for the uh, the fastest internet possible. Oh, okay. So it's for faster internet. Yes, correct. Okay. I have another question. Um, I'm interested in a new iPhone. Yeah, sure. Let me have a look. So are you um are you looking for a month to month contract or something that is prepaid? I'm looking for prepaid. 
Okay, no problem. And uh, are you looking for an iPhone 13 Pro Max, the regular iPhone 13 or, or an iPhone SE? Um, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Excellent, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Got that. Uh, is there anything else that I can help you with? No, you've helped me a lot. Okay, then I wish you a very nice day. Bye. And thank you. Bye-bye. So what's happening here is that the AI is listening in on this conversation while the human-to-human -human interaction is happening with an agent and pushing both data to personalize the experience as well as information to help the agent more pro uh, be more productive. The last thing I'll show while we have time here is a smart self-service experience. Again, you might have had these kinds of self-service experiences before, but if you think about what's happening in real time here and how the caller is able to express themselves in their own words, I think it's an impressive example. Welcome to the customer service line. How can I help you? Hi, I need to cancel my hotel booking. Sure, I can help you with that. To get started, please give me your booking number. Okay, it is 413-8543. One moment, please. Before I cancel your stay, I need to verify your identity. Can I send you an SMS to the phone number ending with 8531? Okay. All right. Please read the four-digit verification code when you get it. Okay, I got it. It is 4630. Thank you. Your stay was just canceled, and you'll receive an email confirmation shortly. Anything else I can do for you? Actually, yes. I'd like to understand if my travel insurance will cover the cancellation cost. Okay. To explore this, I'd like to hand you over to an agent. Can you stay on the line? Yes, that would be great. Okay, please hold. Hello, Jessica. This is Johnny. Hi, Johnny. So I understand you have a question about your travel insurance. I'm happy to help you with that. Great. So in this example, you're able to see an end-to-end -end service experience. And at the end, when we need to transfer the caller over to speak to an agent, the agent has all of the context, can personalize the interaction from the get-go, and be able to jump into delivering value to the caller. So that's what I wanted to share with you today on how to power up your customer experience with conversational AI. We have a booth here today. I hope you'll come and join us. We're right near the entrance, and I look forward to talking with you more.